W. Fitch Company presents Dick Powell as Private Detective Richard Rose. In Rogue's Gallery. Rogue speaking. Well, I've got a Man Bites Dog title for my story tonight. Blondes Prefer Gentlemen. Hmm. How do you like that? But before we get into our story, here's Jim Doyle, the man from the Fitch Company. It's no trick at all to get a smooth, comfortable shave with Fitch's No Brush Shaving Cream. You just wet your face, apply the cream with your fingers, and you're ready to shave. The instant you apply Fitch's No Brush to your face, the special skin conditioner ingredient goes into action to prepare your skin for the shave. It gets right next to your skin to hold the whiskers up until the razor comes along and mows them down. The lubricating qualities of Fitch's No Brush actually help your razor glide easily without nicking or scraping your face. Then when your shave is finished, your face will feel cool, relaxed, and refreshed. Fitch's No Brush is the easy-to-use shave cream that's fast becoming a favorite with men everywhere. Get it at your drug counter. Or if you prefer a lather cream, get Fitch's Brush Cream. It also contains the special skin conditioner. Leaves your face feeling soft and smooth when the shave is finished. Fitch's No Brush and Fitch's Brush Cream come in 25 and 50 cent sizes. Thank you, Jim. And now I'd like to tell my story. Okay, here's Dick Powell as Private Detective Richard Rogue in another personally conducted tour through... Rogue's Gallery. I was really as busy as a cat in a kennel when this little old lady walked in. I was on a retainer from a theater chain to find who was tapping their tills. About as exciting as going to the racers broke, and I needed more business like a canary needs an arranger. But I've got a weak spot for little old ladies, especially when they look like this one. Apple-cheeked, a little on the pudgy side, with curly snow-white hair showing beneath a black bonnet. Ah, oh, she was a picture. She took me back a lot of years, and I like being back there. Barefoot boy with cheeks of tan. Hmm. Oh, good Lord, could that have been me? Well, anyway, there she stood, just inside the door, with a little scared smile on her lips. Are you Mr. Rogue? That's right. Well, uh, could I see you for a moment? Why, of course. Come in and have a chair. Oh, here, take this one. That's the most comfortable one in the office. It has a back. Oh, thank you. I know you're a busy man, Mr. Rogue, but, well, I've been so worried and... Look, uh, and Mrs... Mrs. Echo. Mrs. Echo, you've got trouble? Well, you don't look like the type. It's my granddaughter, Mr. Rogue. Oh. Oh, she's really a lovely girl. You would just be crazy about her if you knew her. Everybody is. I don't know what's the matter with her. She's worried and distracted and... Well, she's just not herself anymore. Sounds to me like she's in love. Oh, no, Mr. Rogue. It isn't love. Detta's in some kind of trouble. I know she is. You see, her letters were so distressing that I came up to see her. Oh, you don't live here in town? Oh, my goodness, no. I live in Fairfax. Yes, that's where Detta went to school. She came up here to take a job singing. Oh, she was so happy at first. What happened uh, when you came up here to see her? Well, she got me a room in the Bellevue Hotel. She has a roommate in the apartment with her. I knew she was in trouble the minute I talked with her. She acted frightened and... Well, I, I just can't sleep for worrying about her, Mr. Rowe. Now, now, please don't cry. <laughs> if I can help you, I will. Well, if it's a matter of money, I... Well, it, uh, it isn't. Uh, you know something? When I was a kid, I spent all my Thanksgivings and... Christmases at my grandma's house. Oh. She was the greatest person in the world to me, and, you know, she looked just like you. And talked just like you, and worried just like you. You think I'm just a nervous old lady. You think I'm just making all this up in my own mind. But I know Detta so well. She's so helpless and uh, unworldly. Of course, Graham. Yes. Uh, you just leave everything to me and don't worry. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what's your granddaughter's name and where can I find her? Her name is Detta Eckel, 
And she lives at the Clybourne Apartments. Apartment uh, 403. Here's a key to it. She doesn't know I have it, but I stole it. For you. <laughs> okay, yes. okay, Graham. <laughs> now, now, you just give me all the details, and I'll try my best to find out what it is that's bothering that little girl of yours. Well, that's me, the boy volunteer. Never so busy that I can't neglect a steady client to take on a case that wouldn't mean a dime to me. You'd think I hated the sight of money, which is less than the truth. Well, I just sat there for a while thinking about my grandmother in those dear, dead childhood days. Me, the guy who wouldn't bet eight to five that tomorrow's Friday. Well, it uh, suddenly dawned on me that I had work to do, so I pulled the emergency cord on the dream train and made a few calls on theaters. And then about seven o'clock, I remembered my new client, and I dropped in at the Clybert Apartments. They were nice. A self-operated elevator whizzed me up to the fourth floor, and I knocked at the door of 403. Nobody answered, so I unlocked the door and walked in. And there, across the room from me, was a young girl. She was lying on the floor, and there was a little pool of blood around her head. I just stood there for a split second while that still, small voice within me talked sense. You'd better get out of here, Rogie. That dame's dead. Oh, brother. Right in the back of the head. Ah, the poor kid. Yeah, the poor kid. What's it to you? This is gonna be tough on that little old lady. But that's none of your business. Come on, Rogie. Take distance. Hey! Good Lord, what a spot I was in. Yeah, better get back in that apartment and get the door closed before somebody sees you out here. Okay, okay, don't tell me what to do. Oh, this is too bad. A sweet-looking kid, nice face, cute figure, dancer's legs. She was writing something when she got it. There, on the desk. Yeah. To the chief of the police, I have some information. That's as far as she got. Sure. She knew too much. That's why she got bumped. What makes you so inquisitive? You tired of living? Snapshot. Hmm. Huh. Brother. Like the looks of that little blonde in the bathing suit, Rogie? Miss Universe of 1940 anything. Somebody's coming in, Rogie. Better get behind the door where the killer hid when you stuck your skinny neck in here. You better be ready for anything. <laughs> quiet, quiet. You want the cops to come up here? Let go of me. Wait a minute now. Oh, no, Francie, Francie. Is she dead? Yes, I'm afraid she is. You know who killed her? You did, of course. I did? What would I kill her for? I don't even know her. Stop pointing that gun at me. If you're going to shoot me, go ahead. I don't care. I'd rather be dead. I would, I would. Have you any idea who might have killed Miss Eckle? I'm Miss Eckle. That... That was Francie McCall. She was my singing partner. You killed her thinking it was me. Look, would you mind straightening me out a little bit? If you were dead at Eckle... I am dead Eckle. Look, here's my driver's license, my initial on my person. There on the mantel is a picture of me. You killed the wrong girl. I'm the one who was supposed to have been killed. You better go back to Mooney and tell him you made a mistake. Look, baby, I'm Richard Rogue, the private dick. I'm not a killer. Now, why is this Mooney guy trying to have you bumped? If he's responsible for killing your friend, we have to get him for it, don't we? Go away from me. Go away. Go away. Don't you touch me. Don't touch me. Well, there I was with a dead dame and a hysterical dame in my hands. I liked that dead one best at the time. I couldn't shut this other one up. She was the little blonde from the bathing suit snapshots. She looked like one of those composite pictures Hollywood press agents get out combining the best features of all the stars in one deluxe edition. It was a pleasure to take tender care of her. I put cold claws on her head, I rubbed her hands, I talked to her. Finally, I convinced her I was a friend. And then she cuddled up to me, like a little kid. 
I called Urban at headquarters and reported the murder. Detta kept right on bawling. I couldn't stop her. Oh, look, look, baby. Are you going to tell me what this is all about, or do you want to wait and tell the cops? They'll be here any minute now, and there's no use going... I won't tell anyone. I can't. If I do, I'll be killed, just like Francie. Don't ever go away and leave me, will you? Well, of course not. You think I'm crazy? You just take it easy now and tell me what this is all about, will you? Take it easy? With my best friend lying there dead? Oh, it's all my fault. Oh, look, doll, nothing's your fault. Stop beating yourself to death. What are you mixed up anyway? Come on, tell me. Let me help you. I will. If you get me a drink of water. All right. Yeah. Now you try to get hold of yourself, little one. You're going to need all the brains you have when the cops get here. Hey! Why, that dirty little double-crossing... Oh, brother, that's all I need for her to run out on me. I tried to beat that elevator down and almost broke my pretty little stuck-out neck doing it. I missed a stair between the third and second floors and flew blind for a while before I caught my balance again. I hit the front door like I had the Notre Dame team behind me and ran across the sidewalk just in time to see Detta pulling away in a cab. She had too much of a start on me for footwork, so I ran for another cab. Follow that cab. Huh? What'd you say? Follow that cab. There's 20 bucks in it for you if you catch it. Okay, for 20 bucks, I'll drive you over that cab. Watch this, mister. Look out, look out! Hey, had an accident, didn't you? No, no, no. Just trying to cure my hiccups. Get out of the way. Just a minute, Rogue. Where are you going? Oh, hello, Urban. I wasn't going anyplace. I was oh, just he was in the cab. He was going someplace, all right. Oh. Take that driver down and lock him up, Olson. Maybe we can teach him not to pull out in front of police cars. Look, Lieutenant Urban, I've got to make a call. If you don't I understand there's a dead girl on the fourth floor of this apartment building. Yeah, and you know how you know? I told you, remember? Then you try to run out. <laughs> You're smarter than that, Rogue. Uh, come on, boys. Push the button there, will you? For... Now, who is this Dane that got the business, Rogue? I don't know. You don't know? You just happened to drop in because you heard she was dead, eh? No, I... Well, I was working on a case, and I... Okay. You go first, Rogie. This is it. Try the door, Stacy. It's open. Oh, you know everything, don't you? I try to keep in touch. Mm, shot from a distance of over two feet, right at the base of the brain. Never knew what hit her. That's right. Who did it, Rogie? And why? I don't know. What's her name? Francie something or other. I, I don't know her last name. Where'd you meet her? I never met her. Alive. First time I saw her, she was lying right there, dead. You're going to be difficult, eh? You bullhead. Stick around. You mean I'm pinched? Did I say so? Now, look. You're not talking to some correspondent school pickpocket, you know, Lieutenant. Either pinch me or let me go and make up your mind which right now. Shut up. I didn't like the way Urban talked to me. I thought of that elevator. It was practically an escape hatch. I edged over toward the door, and while the boys in blue were chortling over the corpse... I made my break. I could hear the cops running down the stairs as I ran out through the door and jumped into a cab and got out of there. Step on it, driver. There's a double saw buck in it for you if you get me out of here without picking up a tail. Okay, mister, hang on. Oh, what's the matter? Can't you get this corn shell out of low? I'm doing the best I can. The rest of the people won't get off the street. No. Oh, we're being tailed. There's a cab following us. Lose him. Take a quick turn at the next corner. Well, what goes? He's still with us. Come on, step on it. I had a good driver. He pulled every trick in the book to lose that shadow, but none of them worked. I was being followed. I didn't know who was following me, 
But I did know it wasn't the police. And that it wasn't a friend. We'll return to our story in just a moment. But first, I'd like to tell you about the thousands of smart women throughout the United States and Canada, including glamorous Bess Meyerson, Miss America of 1945, who are now using Fitch's saponified shampoo to keep their hair lustrous, soft, and silky. These smart women have discovered that Fitch's saponified shampoo gives a rich, abundant lather even in hard water. And what is more important, they've discovered that this rich, billowy lather carries away all impurities from their hair and scalp, leaving the scalp clean and refreshed, the hair sparkling and lovely. After the fragrant lather has done its work of cleansing the hair and scalp, the patented rinsing agent goes into action. This rinsing agent acts with the rinse water to remove every tiny particle that might remain to hide hair beauty. No special after rinse is required. You'll find Fitch's saponified shampoo is economical for use by the entire family. Buy that big economy 16-ounce size that sells for $1 or the generous six-ounce size for 50 cents. If you prefer, ask for a professional application at your barber or beauty shop. Fitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. And now we return to our story. Richard Rogue is in a cab, having just eluded the police who want to question him about the murder of a young girl. He looks out of the back window of his cab and sees that he's being followed. He urges his driver to greater speed, but still the shadowing cab follows him. Rogue is worried. Maybe I'm just the sensitive type, but every time I thought of that little girl lying up there in that apartment, dead and looked back at the cab that was following me, I got a little more lonesome for a large crowd. I told my driver to speed up and pull around a corner fast. He did. I jumped out and he kept going. The other cab kept right after him. I hopped in another cab and joined the parade. Now I was doing the tailing. I got a good look at my ex-shadow when he got out at the Club Modern and went in. That's all I wanted right at that point, so I told my driver to take me to the Bellevue Hotel. I wanted to talk with Grandma Eckel on a matter of life and death. Oh, hello, Mr. Rogue. Good evening, Mrs. Eckel. I, I have to talk well, to you. Well, come in, won't you? You know, I've been trying to reach you at your office. I'm very anxious to get in touch with your granddaughter, Mrs. Eckel. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was a silly old woman this morning, Mr. Rogue. I've been trying to reach you to tell you to forget my visit. Oh, I see. Have you talked with your granddaughter? Yes, yes, I have, uh, by phone. Oh? Hmm. She hasn't been up here? No, no, she hasn't. She's been very busy. And, uh, well, uh, will $50 be enough for you? I mean, for my wasting your time? Just a minute. Uh, look, Graham, uh, you've been smoking too much. Hmm? Uh, I beg your pardon? Oh, look at this ashtray. It's full of cigarette butts, fresh ones, covered with lipstick. Oh, yes. <clears throat> you aren't wearing any lipstick, Graham. Where'd they come from? Well, I, I guess they must have been there when I took the room. Oh, no, no, yes. no, Graham. Now, here, sit down there. You know, you're not a very good liar. Your granddaughter has been up here, and she hasn't been gone long. She told you to get me off the case, didn't she? No. No, you're wrong. I want you to drop the case because I found that there was nothing the matter with my little girl, uh, that I had imagined the whole thing. Yeah? Did you imagine a murder? Murder? Mrs. Eckel, please take my word for it. I have to find your granddaughter. Now, what did she tell you? Well, uh, she told me that if I didn't get you off the case, she'd be killed. That's just what she told me. Who does she know by the name of Mooney? Ever hear her mention that name? Yes, yes, let me now, see. Now, think, what... Graham, think. Who is Mooney? Mooney, he's the man that Detter has been keeping company with. Well, what do you know about him? Where can I find him? What does he do for a living? He's, uh, he's a gambler. He has the gambling rooms above the club where Detta's been singing. Where's Detta now? She went to meet him. She went someplace to meet Mooney? Yes. She called him from here. She was going to meet him at the club. The Club Modern? Is that the name of the club? Yes, that's it. The Club Modern. Oh, please take care of her, Mr. Rogue. You know, she's all I have in the world. <laughs> yeah. 
I was a mightily worried little man as I grabbed a cab and took off to the Club Modern. This kid, this Detta Echo. Oh, she should have never left Fairfax. Poor little dumb dame. I, I just hoped I could, I could get to her before Mooney got another chance at her, that's all. I walked into the Club Modern and stood for a moment in the foyer, looking around for Detta and Mooney. <laughs> It's a gun in your kidney, Rogue. Just keep moving. Oh, you couldn't get away with knocking me off here. Are you kidding? Well, I'm willing to gamble if you are. Now move. Up those steps over there at the right. Go on. Okay, okay, tough stuff. You're calling this dance. When you get to the head of those stairs, turn right. To the red door over there, you see it? Yeah, yeah, I see it. You have to poke so hard with that gun, Junior. I'm very ticklish. I'm dying laughing. Keep moving. Rogue here just walked in, Mooney. Oh, come in, Rogue. Sure. Were you expecting me? More or less. Thanks, Maxie. Ah, nice little place you have here. You like it better than tailing me around in a cab, Mooney? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know Miss Eckle, I believe. Yes, we've met. Uh, hello, Dada. You left in such a hurry last time I saw you, honey, that I didn't have a chance to say goodbye. What are you doing here? How did you find me? That's a secret. I came in to tell you not to worry about Mooney. You're quite a talker, aren't you, Rogue? Well, sure, yes. Let's talk about murder, Mooney. No, let's talk about money, Rogue. You're a guy that burns up a lot of it, I understand. Uh, would five grand affect your memory? What am I supposed to forget? A little incident at the Clybourne Apartments, remember? Vaguely. You killed a girl up there, didn't you? Me? No. But that's beside the point. You want to play ball? I didn't say no. Where's the dough? Oh, oh, looks very pretty. Count it out, Money. Sure. While I'm counting, you make up your mind. You want five grand alive or floral wreaths dead? My hero blood was reaching the boiling point, and I could feel a foolish move coming on. I nerved myself up to my desperate Desmond personality, and then while Mooney had both hands busy counting money, I made a dive for him, right across the desk. Bullseye. He went over backward in his chair with me on top of him, and we went from there. Oh, you sneaking rat out! Oh, oh, you want to fight that way, huh? Well, okay, mister. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, and here's a kiss for you, hard guy. I'll kill you for this, rogue. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, Dada, here. Hold this gun on him while I call the cops, will you? Sure. I was feeling pretty proud of myself when I put in that call for the cops. Richard Rogue, the demon detective, good sleuthing, done cheap. As a matter of fact, I think I was whistling when I heard Dada's footsteps behind me. I was just half turned around when I got it. Oh. The Washington Monument followed me, and I took a dive in the midnight. When I opened my eyes, Mooney was still out. I put my fingers up to the side of my head that felt like it wasn't there, and they came away sticky. I got up and looked around. The five grand was gone, and so was Detta. I threw some water on Mooney and brought him up to date, and then the two of us had a little talk, which was full of surprises for me. And then I ran out of there. The cab starter in front of the club had called a cab for Detta. He'd heard her say, Metropolitan Airport and step on it. I got a cab and said, Metropolitan Airport and step on it. When I got to the airport, I could hear the loudspeakers announcing a flight leaving for San Francisco. I ran through the building and out onto the field, and there she was. Just starting for the plane. Hello, Dada. You leaving again? Oh, Take I... it easy, baby. I've got my heater pointing at you, and I'd hate to have to shoot any holes in that lovely dress. How did you know I was out here? You know, you're not very smart, baby. The cab started at the club, or did you tell the taxi driver where you wanted to go? <laughs> you should never have taken up murder as a hobby. Murder? Yeah, please don't be coy. Just explain something to me. Where did you get a ticket for the plane so fast? From a Marine. I, I told him I had to get back home. Well, thanks. I I'm glad to know that Mooney and I aren't the only guys in the world that are suckers for blondes with your uh, appeal. I'm not going back. They'll kill me. They'll execute me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't mean to kill anyone. You have to listen to me. It's a little late for that. You'd better be thankful they can only fry you once, lovely. Come on. You've got a date with the DA. He wants to see you about a couple of murders. <laughs> Well, I turned the luscious data over to Urban, thereby winning his undying affection for about 20 minutes. Cops are very unconstant personalities. And then I muscled my poor, tired body back to my office. Oh, I was so tired I couldn't have raised my eyebrows with a block and tackle. I opened the door and wished I'd gone straight home. Grandma Eckel was sitting there, straight as a Roxy usher. Well, Mr. Rogue, have you seen Detta? What? Uh, yes, I... I uh... She's in jail. Oh, now, don't don't take it too hard, Graham. I was at her apartment. The police were just removing the body of Francie McCall. Well, you, you know that Detta was in... Are you trying to tell me that Detta killed that girl? Yes, uh, she did, you know. Why? Why did she do it? Well, uh, a couple of months ago, Detta ran over a little girl and killed her in a hit-and-run accident. She told Francie about it, and that's what she's been worried about. Oh, Francie was going to tell the police today. That's why Dad has shot her. Oh, believe me, I, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. I believe I owe you some money, Mr. Rogue. Oh, no, no, please. I insist. I retained you to do a job, and you did it. I'll mail you a check in the morning. No, 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 please, no. I'll uh, tell you, if you, uh, if you really want to do something for me, how about inviting me to your house for Thanksgiving dinner? You, you know, Graham, they, they don't make money big enough to buy things like that. Will you come? <laughs> well, just ask me. All right, son. And we'll never mention this again, will we? Never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I, I think I'm going to, to cry a little. Well, that's the end of the story, except that they didn't burn Detta. The jury was looking at her when they should have been listening to the evidence. Mooney and I got to be pretty good friends. I learned that he'd been waiting downstairs for Detta while she was busy killing Francie. She told him what happened, and he was trying to catch me to butt my lip with hush money. <laughs> he was in love with the gal. The Marine that got talked out of his plane ticket was suffering from a touch of the same malady. Well, who wasn't? If there's anything in the theory of reincarnation, I want to come back as a blonde with Detta's equipment. Then I can get away with murder. Unless there's a guy around as smart as Richard Rogue, and that doesn't seem possible. Now, does it? This is Dick Powell again. We all hope you liked our show tonight. Ray Buffum wrote it. The music was composed and conducted by Leith Stevens, and production and direction was by D. Engelbach. Next week, we're going to do a real thriller entitled... Murder in drawing room A. Lots of excitement. Don't miss it. Good night, all. And now, here's Jim Doyle. Don't forget to tune in again next Thursday, same time, same station, when you will again hear Dick Powell as Richard Rogue in Rogue's Gallery. Remember, if dandruff is your problem, ask for Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Removes dandruff the first time it is used. Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo is the only shampoo whose guarantee to remove dandruff is backed by one of the world's largest insurance companies. This statement can be made by no other shampoo. Ask for Fitch's Dandruff Remover Shampoo at your drug counter, Barbara Beauty Shop. Fitch is spelled F-I-T-C-H. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>